Thompson. I am a sophomore at Hartford High School, and my play is Innocence Beyond Recognition. So my twin sister had come up with this idea, because I am a huge superhero fan. I just love them. So I was all the TV shows, they kept on like guilt tripping themselves, and like, it's my fault I didn't save this person. It's my fault, it's my fault. I'm like, why do people always put the blames on themselves? So I was like, that doesn't make sense. So what if it truly was their fault, but everyone around them is convincing them that it was not? So that's what Innocence Beyond Recognition really came from. That was the inspiration for it. So I think what the audience should get out of Innocence Beyond Recognition is why do we have this blame? And uh, our perception is a reality. And like society gives us these shoes sometimes, and are we going to step in them? And that's what really uh, the main character decides to do, is that he is affected by the peer pressure, and he just decides they're giving me this pathway to go, I'll just go that way. And it's, what is that in your life today? What is, is society pressuring you to do something? Should you take out of that mold? And is that the right thing to do? Is that the moral stance that you, that you should take? And that's when I smelled the smoke. I, I left out of bed and started crawling for the door. I did what they always tell you to in elementary school. I put the back of my hand to the door to feel how warm it was and if it was safe to escape that way. That must have been so scary. All the smoke. So hard to see. I don't think I would have been able to handle it. It was, it was very bad. I, I felt like I was being burned at the stake. Did you see, Jimmy? Did you hear him? What was he like when he died? Kitty, you don't want to know. It was... Kitty, you don't want to think of him like that. His, his last moments were... I don't know how to say it. Just say it. Take your time. He was a traitor to his character. What do you mean, David? Was he crying? Was he in pain? Why was Jimmy a... Traitor to his character. It just wasn't your Jimmy Kitty. You don't want to think of him like that. I'm, so, I'm sure no one would be themselves in that moment. I mean, it had to be hard to breathe, and you had to be so scared. Jimmy and died because of me. Well, tell that to the boy who you saved, to, the, to the, his family. No hero, Jim, even as much as you'd like to think of me as one. What's the matter? Why do you keep insisting that you're not? You're the only person who made it out and saved someone. What was the guy's name? Peter. He is He's one, of, one the... of the best football players on our team, and with his skills, he could be going professional one day. Yeah, he might, but, but Jimmy was going to become a teacher. Katie, remember how he was always there when we needed help? Yeah, he was always a real natural when it came to teaching. He was there every time I was so confused on my math, and he always stepped me through it without getting mad at me. Or how when you got your heels stuck in the mud and the mud went all over your dress and he just started acting like a goofball to make more people notice him than your ruined outfit. I'm, I'm going to miss him. David, I miss him so much, I just, I don't know how I'm going to be able to get through this. He was, he was a great guy. He was perfect to a fault. I just can't talk about him in the past tense right now. It's too soon. It still doesn't feel to me like he's gone. Did you know that one of the firefighters of an engagement ran in your Jimmy's eyes? It just isn't fair. What, what, what if fate chose wrong? Katie, I did what I did, but I can't help from blaming myself. Don't twist fate. Don't get trapped in this world of what ifs. You said you did your best, and that's all that matters. This is all some dream. Like, like it's some crazy nightmare that I can't wake up from. I know this is a hard time to bring this up, but weren't you and Jimmy arguing about something recently? Uh, yeah, but it, it doesn't matter now. None of it matters now. Should I have done things differently? I, I mean, it just happened so fast. Why do you keep coming back to that you should have done more? You were the only person to save someone besides himself. You were not some failed superhero. You had so much courage. You're a hero even if you don't feel like one. So stop throwing this pity party 
And besides, you need to stop worrying this handsome head off of yours. No girls don't want to be around you if you have all this negative energy. I, I think I just need some time to think it all through and take it all in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you said your parents are driving up, right? Yeah, I had to call them about an hour ago because they couldn't figure out how to use the phone to text me. <laughs> parents. So, they'll be here in a couple hours, giving me some time to sleep a little. Okay, David. I'll see you in a couple days. Remember, you did everything you could, and, and Jimmy isn't your fault. <coughs> I better run after her. I hope everything works out okay. Bye. The fire outside the door wasn't bad. I, I heard screams and started running towards Peter's room. I yelled through the door to see if anybody could hear me. There was no response, even though seconds before he was screaming. That's what, that's what fire does to someone. It makes you fear for your life and not care at all about what you're doing. Peter would have never been caught dead screaming like that on the field. I, I kicked the door down and almost stepped on a crumpled heap of Peter. I, I slowly dragged him out and closer to the exit when I passed Jimmy's door. I could see Jimmy's hands grasping at anything to get himself out of his room. So I, I put Peter down. Oh, sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. Oh, my goodness. Look at these birds on you. Has no one been in here to help my sweet boy? Uh, the staff here has been nice. I'm okay. I could go home if I had a place to stay. I'm fine. But you look terrible. Honey, of course he looks terrible. He was in a fire. You know what? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to sue that school. That's what I'm going to do. How dare they put my poor helpless boy in harm's way when he's supposed to be there getting an education, not being some standing firefighter. David, you could have died. Mom, you don't understand. I, I keep on telling everyone that it's my fault. But they can't understand. It starts making me wonder if I'm wrong. Please don't sue. She's been like this the whole way up here. I couldn't talk a single bit of sense into your mother. You know what? I have a right to be upset when my boy could have been taken away from me. Now, David, you said that you felt like those boys losing their lives was your fault? You know, four of my buddies died in that fire. Guys that had their whole lives in front of them. And because of a, a, a terrible fire, those lives are gone. Way too soon. I... Three were on another floor, but, but Jimmy was in the room next to me. Jimmy died because of me. David! I just felt like I was doing something good when the fire broke out. Yeah, I, I saved one person's life, but I failed to save another. Do you think he hit his head on something? Because my boy isn't thinking straight. Why would you blame yourself for something like that? It's like saying you, you couldn't help save a lady from being mugged in the next city over. It's not your responsibility unless you're the police. You did all right, David. David, your father is right. You did everything that you could. How could my poor helpless boy think that such an atrocity could be his fault? You know what, David? You are a hero, okay? Those boys are alive because of you, come David. Your mother's kind of right for once. Don't beat yourself up. You helped someone. You, you put others before yourself. That took determination and sacrifice. Now, if only you could carry those traits into your studies, you could really achieve something. Girl, you should not be talking about the things when you're so good at that. Would you just stop lecturing me on my grades for a minute? That's all that you ever do. Does, does it seriously take a fire to make you guys come here and see me? You think you can just swoop in here and save the day? Well, not in middle school anymore. Mom, you are always babying me. I'm an adult whether you like it or not. I'm sorry if I don't think of you as a hero like a lot of their friends do about their dads, but you're no Superman. There are, there are no real heroes in this world, just people who decide who lives and dies at their feet. There's no Captain Americas or spider Man. just people who get caught in the crossfire and decide to do something about it. So what are you even doing here? David! I don't know what's gotten into you, son, but I don't like it. Now, sweetheart, you're just experiencing the five stages of grief. I know, I read the book. Okay, so right now... David obviously doesn't care about a book you read. It's not his fault for once, and that's fine. 
If he's going to beat himself up over something that he didn't do, that might make him a stronger man. But no book is going to help him. You know what? I'm just trying to help. My son is in need of his mother's wisdom. Oh, you have got to stop with this books and your blogs and all of the other... No, no, no. It's time to... Mr. and Mrs. Kowalski? But it seems that you're getting David a little more worked up than doing him good at this stressful time. David needs calming and supporting people right now, and I'm afraid you're just not doing that. Um, if you could please leave, that would be in your son's best interest. Well, don't we need to sign some forms or something? You know, for his parents, he has to come home with us. We need a place to live. Mom, I'm not still 12 with a broken arm. I'm fine, and I'm making arrangements to stay so I can still go to class. So, please, just, just go. Honey, he said go, and you're making a scene. So full of rage, it was worse than the fire around us. In that moment, all of my rage was focused on the coward of a man before me. I, I know what I did was wrong. I know what I did wasn't the moral thing to do. I'm being portrayed as the hero, but I'm truly the villain for what I did to Jimmy. Or, better said, didn't do. It, it was wrong. But in that moment, it felt so right. Oh, it was beautiful karma. I feel like the tables were finally evened out for what Jimmy had done to me. I, I reached forward with the flames crackling around us in Jimmy's pleading eyes. I said, Justice. What did you say, David? Oh, uh, uh, Professor, I, I didn't hear you come in. Uh, I was just speaking to myself to make sense of it all. And I was saying how unjust the fire was. Uh, yes, it was. But it would have claimed one more victim if you weren't there. Peter is one of my students, and you saved his life. I was just here visiting my mother and thought I would check in on you. Oh, well, at first I thought you were here to ask about my grades. <laughs> How's your mother doing? Slipping. She's slipping very quickly. I'm sorry to hear that. Since you were here, give it to me straight, please. I think it was my fault. I could have done things differently. Everyone keeps telling me that I'm the hero and did everything I could, but what if they're wrong? Hero's dilemma. Which life is worth more? Did he make the right split-second decision? Could he have done more? Tell me, David, do you keep on replaying it over and over again in your head? Is there a moment when you think you could have done better? Something different that would have made a different outcome? Tell the negative committee that meets inside your head to sit down and shut up. <laughs> you were put in a situation and you reacted to the best of your ability, not even knowing if you would make it out alive. You didn't know the outcome as you do now. You put your own life at risk. You helped others before yourself. You were scared. It was in the middle of the night. Well, hope you were more awake than you typically are in my class. <laughs> what I'm saying is that you probably weren't thinking clearly. Yes, you could have made better decisions, but you can't change that now. Unfortunately, this night will hang on your conscience for the rest of your life. Now, answer me honestly. Do you know who started the fire? I, I, I don't know who started the fire. Is that why you came in here? Just question me if I started the fire. No, no. The police are thinking arson, but they don't think it was someone from the dorms. Whoever started the fire is responsible for the four deaths. Don't blame yourself that you couldn't save them from the situation that you were all put into. Make 
make sense? So you're saying it's not my fault? David, it's not your fault. Thank you, that is the best explanation I've got. I know that you and Jimmy were close friends. Did he seem different at all to you in the last few days? What do you mean, Professor? Did he seem more stressed? Was he anxious about anything? Did he tell you at all how he was feeling? No, why? Why do you ask? Well, Jimmy's a rather stellar student, and on his last exam, his name at the top was erased a few times. He knows his own name, right? He did quite poorly on the test, even though I thought he understood it well. What are you getting at here? The police are thinking arson, but what if Jimmy really... What are you, what are you saying? Uh... Are you saying that the fire was a suicide? Are you accusing Jimmy of starting that fire? I'm not saying anything, but it's something to think about. Was there anything at all that just didn't seem right, David? We need to know if this was supposed to harm others on purpose. You know, Jimmy always said that he wanted to be remembered. But I, I never thought it'd be in this way. Jimmy was a little angry at me for some reason the past few days, but, but I don't know why. He always seemed level-headed, though. Sometimes people keep the darkest parts of themselves hidden where no one else is allowed to see. Maybe he was really struggling and didn't let anyone help. His anger might have been the outward signs of him cracking. I just never thought Jimmy, the nicest guy, would ever do something like this. Thank you for sharing that possibility, Professor. Jimmy had so much potential to do something really good. I just think it's so sad that he might have felt helpless in this way. Yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. I think I just need some time to think it all through before I tell anyone about it, if you don't mind. This is his reputation here, and no one likes to speak ill of the dead. Yes, yes I agree. Take your time. Well, soon, David. I'll see you around. I reached forward, grabbing Jimmy's hair, and said, Justice. This is justice for ruining my future. All you had to do was take the test and write my name on it. I would have graduated and gotten the best job. I would have had the perfect wife, had a big house, worn a nice suit. I would have been happy. But instead, I'm going to be thrown out of college and accused of cheating, all because you chickened out. I stepped on Jimmy's fingers with the heel of my foot and whispered, sweet justice. Jimmy started coughing real bad from all the thick black smoke. It was then that I knew what I was going to do. Jimmy was beginning to go unconscious, so he was easy to move aside when I reached for the door. The doorknob wasn't hot, so it was easy for me to lock it. I gave the door one good kick to make sure it couldn't break through. Suddenly, all the rage was gone. It felt so good. But then the fire was starting to get hotter and hotter, and it was harder for me to breathe. So I picked up Peter, and I carried him out of the door. David. I just wanted to say that what you did was very heroic. I couldn't help but overhear that you blame yourself for not saving your friend. Don't blame yourself. I, I know that now. I think it was just a first reaction, but thank you for the reassurance. Good. You should be proud of yourself. Thanks. I didn't catch your name, by the way. It's Mary. Mary, you seem really nice. You've been so supportive through all of this. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, David. Um, once you get this sorted out, would you ever want to go and get coffee sometime? That is so sweet of you, Mary. I'd love to. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. I mean, who 
wouldn't want to have coffee with a hero.